ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Lebuena. Employed me 
was a great Mongani girl, and one of the cast members that toured the United States with Sarafina. So I'm making a very long story short. In the midst of all of that, some of us knew and realized that we had a different responsibility than those that came before us, on that Kanuba, on that Masikela, on that Kaifas, Memiria, Meleta. I was a kid amongst them. And I don't stand here as Lebohem. I stand here before you grateful for this honor, yet continue to accept a certain responsibility some of us have. And that responsibility is bigger than Lebohem, it's bigger than most of us musicians and artists. When I was called in many years ago to coordinate and produce and arrange a segment of the Oscars when Cry Freedom was nominated, it became a highlight of Cry Freedom. And I take one I remember saying to me, when I'm done, I got a pop, I'm out of your go places. <laughs> Which is something I, always, I heard everywhere. So when I was asked to come, Today, uh, the most dangerous thing is to put me in front of a microphone to speak because I don't know how to prepare and I don't know how to speak per se. But needless to say, I do my best. I accept this great honor not before, on behalf of Labour M because I've been blessed to be surrounded by greatness. I'm a student of greatness from Pelican to the tour in Africa to the Oscars. I have a Grammy, I have a Tony nomination. But one or two things I'd love to impress upon you is I'm known as the Lion King guy. <laughs> yeah, that one. The journey of the Lion King for me, represents that which business in Africa, political structures in Africa, and I'm specifically saying Africa, still have a problem, and it's a serious problem. Therefore, on behalf of those that came before me, I want to try to articulate that. The relationship between African culture, African music, that which makes us who we are cannot have an impact anywhere in the world without a particular political philosophy that is supported by business. When we commenced doing Lion King auditions some 21 years ago in a beautiful place called South Africa, this is a Broadway production. I have a relationship with Disney and the Lion King for almost 25 years now. It became immediately clear that as Africans, talent is a given. Whether it's musicians, dancers, or, or script writers, it's a given. But I think there's a discrepancy between business the creative arts and the politics that define the past, the present, and the future. It became painfully real when one realized, that, you know, being the only black guy in the head of this good Disney, you know, hanging out with the chairman of Disney and the group CEO and, and everybody else, it becomes immediately clear when 21 years ago, a lily white company from a place called America invests no less than $25 million to mount an African inspired product called the Lion King on Broadway. That's 21 years ago. $25 million. And you find yourself being the only black person, let alone African, 
in the presence of Elton John, Tim Rice, and all the greats. And you realize that the driver of this vehicle, the driver of this product that changed bottom line for Disney, is who I am, is who we all are. But someone, not South African, not African, invested $25 million to mount the first line in production, which opened in New York. The consequence of that is in the 15th anniversary of The Lion King on Broadway, Disney generated $7.8 billion on one property, an African-inspired property. That means if five governments in South Africa invest, in Africa invested $25 million on a high-quality product, $7.8 billion would have been revenue generated from the one product it's called the Lion King. In the last 20 years, we celebrated 20 years of the longest, most successful Broadway production in history. 20 years. Which every production is about 10 or 15 of them around the world has no less than nine South Africans unknown. And there's a reason for that. So when you convert that from creative arts to business, not only do we hire more South Africans and put them in the best stages in the world, from New York, London, Japan, everywhere, we also somehow directly or indirectly contribute foreign currency into the economy of South Africa. Because every South African we hire, as you know, we either send money home, we have amazing stories of young people who hire from age 18 or buy a home for their mother or put their siblings through school. Yet, as it is, while I'm very honored and on behalf of those that came before me, there's still no reconciliation of investing in African products and in African business. The strategies, the thought processes, what goes into the boardrooms have very little to do with the value of African content and how it relates to business. Zero. I propose that almost 25 years since this new dispensation, maybe between business and the political infrastructures, a new approach needs to take place. An approach that says the following, just in summary. If foreign companies can look at African content and look at African talent and invest their money, and as many, Lion King is just one of them, and invest their money and own the property, take it around the world, generate serious cash. So my proposition today is we need to start talking about money, the relationship of money and the creative arts and business. We need to figure out how to create businessmen in the creative arts. We need to figure out how to create more than the obvious and the given. The obvious and the given is talent. There's not enough business interaction. There's not enough administrative expertise. There is not enough or zero lawyers that protect the dignity, the integrity of African culture. <clears throat> Even in commercial music, if you look at the history of South African music in the modern era, since the new dispensation, when we first came back home, the leaders of the sector in real business, I'm familiar with only three of them. There was a company, a foreign company called Sony, still exists. It was led, it was led then by a brother named Lazisuro. 
whose partner was in the Lalim case. And together they drove the revenue for this business. They created catalogs that are still the shining stars of this sector as we speak today. If you look at EMI, then the foundation of the business of the record business in South Africa in a modern era. Second man there was a brother named Leslie Sidibe. And you look at and study all these other record companies, I'm just basically talking about the record companies. If I talk about the theater business, then I have to talk about my lady was who will be here for the longest time. In 2018 today, the pioneers of Kwaito from the administrative office to the studios are no longer in the business. They have been replaced systematically in some way, shape, or form by those that do not form the foundation of the revenue generating sector. That basically, to me, as an observer, Kantona Kutla, is there's something wrong. There's a discrepancy between our political structures, our business environment, and the creative arts and the business thereof. In conclusion, the idea that we're in a new dispensation and continue to look at the creative arts as a by the way and not as part of the economy. It's a great injustice for those that came before us. It's a great injustice for those that are supposed to build the future because they are heroes, as we all know, but don't talk about. Don't have private jets, don't have Bentleys. We hear the same story every time someone passes away, we have great speeches, but there's no strategy to close the gap. But there is a plan, there is a strategy, there is investment for hip hop. There is strategy, there is a plan, there is investment for R&B. There is a strategy, there is a plan, there is for everything foreign but for us. The consequence of that is that young people only know about foreign icons. They only hear or watch it. Those that they see on television, on their phones. Because the material success perception they see is that of Lamborghinis, is that of everything else that their heroes don't have. And their heroes don't have that because there's no business environment, there's no cultural, political will. To say for the last 80 years we've been great, talented people, in the next 80 years we must be great, talented, successful business people that own the sector. There is no reason why Lazis Rob is no longer in the record business. There's no reason why Leslie Steam is no longer in the record business. There's no reason why I'm going to get him. It's technically no longer in the business. There's no reason why demand level can only claim of and any of those things when they have such great intellectual capacity, when they have such great vision, when they have created such great foundation. So we need you, business. We need you, the political infrastructure, to help create a new path that says we can no longer say we have an Oscar from us. Because the owners of that property are probably not South African. The talent that made the Oscar. I'm sorry, the product so see what it is or what it was are not benefiting in cash, what we call long money. Wow. 
because someone else, not from South Africa, invested a little bit of money, created a product that is our story, put it around the world, and made so much money then we just get invited to the red carpet. How many more red carpets are we going to have? But no cash that reconciles the red carpet. No cash. I don't want to be like where I am and, and don't have a bank account so my grandchildren and my great-grandchildren can say, I will tell you it's really trust. It is a sad but fixable economy. But it will take business, political infrastructure throughout Africa, but obviously starting from us, that the minister, both ministers and everybody, to say, is there another way to change this? Yes, there is. The creative and entertainment sector deserves the same attention as all the other sectors have. The question is, what kind of attention? It is attention that says, as you have in sports, you cannot have Ndate Ivan Koza, Ndate Kaiser Ndau in the same room as football players and negotiate a strategy in business for the sector. For them does not happen in mining, does not happen in all the other sectors. But when it comes to the creative business and the creative sector, I'm not familiar with and I'm not aware of a two-pronged strategy that says who are the captains of the industry. That, say, that means who negotiates transactions from the business community or from the black community of 2 million, 5 million, 10 million, 60 million, 30 million. Those are the captains of industry. Those are who should be in the boardrooms, speaking to business and speaking to the political structures and creating new solutions for the way forward. That's different from tenders. And you know, as I was, he's in conclusion, but you don't get this chance all the time to speak to such amazing people. It took me six and a half years to negotiate and broker producing the Lion King and bringing the Lion King to South Africa. Six and a half years. Two and a half years of that meant a forecast with a team of four. Strategy, plan, that says to Disney it can happen in South Africa. The result is an investment of a total package of 65 million rand is what it costs to bring the ranking to South Africa, which ran for 49 weeks and generated gross profits of 120 million rand. So if then I have to come to your office, Mr. Businessman, and want to create the next Lion King, and the last business transaction I did as a creative businessman in the arts was an investment of 65 million rand, but you want me to talk to you about 5 million rands or 3 million rands. There's a discrepancy there. <laughs> yeah. In other circles, they call it arrogance. It's not arrogance, it's my responsibility. I'm instructed by Huma Sikel, I'm instructed by Kafa Sime, I'm instructed by Ken Gampo, I'm instructed by all those that came before me to spell this out and say, things cannot happen the same anymore. That is why I believe that Lema Sileda instructed me to come here. So I receive this honor and follow through with the instruction that I got from Tate Gwanga, from Memaralo, from Lazis <coughs> from Chico Twala, from all of them, that there's got to be a way we start doing business in the creative arts and stop being dancers, singers, and performers. Those are the given. There must be another way, and there is. In a man levels there. Thank you so much. Thank you.